we're still not sure exactly why a woodland climber needed to walk on two legs. But thanks to Artie, we now have a snapshot of one of the most dramatic transformations in the history of our species. The transition from walking on four legs to walking on two. This major change to our ancestral body plan has serious consequences for us today. These consequences can be seen within our own bodies, and they're not all good. This vault in the bowels of the Cleveland Museum of Natural History is the place to go if you want to find out what can go wrong with the human skeleton. Dr. Bruce Latimer is an anthropologist and anatomist who was a curator here for many years. Well, this is the Ham and Todd collection, which is the largest collection of its type in the world. There are over 3,000 skeletons in this room. In each one of these drawers is a complete human skeleton. They come from unclaimed bodies at a Cleveland morgue, dating from the early 1900s. If you study these skeletons, one thing becomes clear pretty quickly. The human back goes wrong a lot. There's an enormous amount of back problems. The pain must have been phenomenal. And you just see that all over this collection. Turns out our bad backs are an unwelcome inheritance from our inner monkey. We took a skeleton like this that was essentially horizontal. We stood it upright. We've had to change essentially every bone to allow us to do that and we force it into this new position. We have a problem going from this kind of animal into that kind of animal, and our main problem is balance. On all fours, the weight of our body hangs down from our spine. But turn this body upright, and the weight is all out front. It puts us out of whack, totally out of balance. In order to balance, we had to create this curve on your back. And then your head would be back here, wouldn't it? So we had to create another curve here in the middle of your chest, and then your head would be sticking out in the front. So we had to create another curve in your neck. And so we have this S-shaped curve in our spine, and we expect that to hold us up. That is an engineering nightmare. Our S-shaped spine is unique among mammals and it causes all sorts of problems. The vertebrae that make up the bones of your back and the discs between them are put under a lot of pressure, particularly the ones at the very apex of the biggest curve, the thoracic vertebrae. If you take those thoracic vertebrae and you push on them from the ends too hard, what happens is this you end up with call, what's called a wedge fracture. That curve has crunched it. No other animal has anything even remotely like this. It's a consequence of how we walk. And it's not just fractured vertebrae. From slip discs to sciatica, our spines go wrong in all kinds of ways. 80% of all Americans will complain of back problems at some point in their lives. Our inner monkey has a lot to answer for.